Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about five mathematical formulas you need to know for your consulting interview. Let's get started. So the first one is fractions and percentage. So this is actually very basic math, but you actually need it for nearly all the case studies that you will see in a consultant interview. So this could be calculating a market share, a profit margin, or return on equity. So really make sure that you practice with this kind of calculation and be very good at it. The second one is incremental changes. So let's imagine in a case interview, you just calculated the profit by using revenue minus cost. And then the interviewer gave you some additional information saying that by doing so, we can potentially increase the revenue by 10% and then decrease the cost by 5%. And then in order to calculate the new profit, instead of calculating the new revenue, the new cost, and then putting those in the revenue minus cost equation again to calculate the new profit, you can actually calculate the amount of increase in revenue, which is 10% times by the original revenue, plus the amount of reduction in cost, which is 5% times by the original cost. And this is actually your incremental increase in profit. And then you can add this increase in profit to the original profit to get the new profit. And hopefully by doing this, you can save yourself a couple of minutes where you can spend on something more interesting. And the third one is compounding. Compounding refers to the increase of a asset value based on its principal value as well as the accumulated interest. So let's imagine a company's revenue has grown by 10% in the first year and then 5% in the second year. So by the end of the second year, the latest revenue equals the original revenue times by one plus 10% times by one plus five percent and therefore the overall amount of increase in revenue equals 15.5 percent and you can see that this is not numerically equivalent to 10 percent plus five percent so you can see that compounding is particularly helpful if you're dealing with a case with more than one year um, occasionally if the amount of increase or interest is very low such as one percent you can actually assume the compounding to be a linear increase and simplify the calculation. And the fourth one is the rule of 72. To be honest, I haven't seen this coming up with a lot of cases, but if this does come up and you know how to do it, this will surely give you a chance to stand out. So the rule of 72 states that the duration of an asset doubling its value equals 72 divided by the interest rate. So one bonus question I have seen in an interview is at the end of the case, the interviewer asks you the client wants to double its revenue in five years time. Is this a practical goal? So at first, this may sound a little bit abstract, but you can then think about it. If the client wants to double its revenue in five years, and then the annual growth of the revenue should be 72 divided by five equals to 14.4%. And therefore, if you look at the past performance of the company, as well as maybe the market in general, maybe you can have a better idea to decide whether this goal is practical or not. And the last one is expectation value. So the expectation value is the anticipated value of a return on an investment in the future. So mathematically, this is calculated by multiplying each outcome by its probability and then sum all the outcomes together. So in a case study, this is often used in drug testing cases. So if the projection revenue of a drug is 1 million US dollars and the probability for it to pass through all the drug testing or drug screening is 10%. So the expectation value should be the sum of all possible outcomes times by their probability. This equals to the success rate 
times by the projection revenue plus the failure rate times by the projection return if the drug fails, which is probably zero. So mathematically speaking, this equals to 1 million US dollars times by 10% plus zero times by 90%, which equals to $100,000. So you can see that by investing in this drug, the anticipated return on investment is actually $100,000. So these are five of the most common mathematical formulas that you will see in the case interview. So please make sure that you know them well and practice them well. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up and I will see you in my next one.